Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast, everybody. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Pete Robertson. What's up, gentlemen? And Barry Rice is back from vacation. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, there's a, that's a, I'm getting a lot of feedback from this, this phone. There's a, is there a, um, uh, or how did the whole Mediterranean, you know, beach vibe go? That was pretty cool. I'm sorry. I lost it. <laughs> yeah. You have a little bit of tan from that. Was How'd that go? Yeah. It's amazing. You, you look what a lot we brighter and redder. In the background of, uh, one of those zoom calls, right? Yes. Yeah. There was no beach where I was at. Oh, so that was all an illusion. It was a, on a farm, man. We were had cows all behind me but you couldn't see them all we saw was the beach man that's right it, it was, was right. fake news pete he was not at the beach oh my he was gosh. in virginia celebrating his birthday right that's right we man. talked about it a little bit last week 53 years old i know but i mean that's it looked old, really man. real didn't it it did i mean they it pulled up really tell good. me you didn't want to go book a cruise after watching him sitting there for an hour well, i was thinking more like a caribbean beach you know, like a little vacation hanging out sitting down how about a mediterranean trip Oh, with missions, yeah. mission travel. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I think we should do that. I think that. that's where we should go. Yeah. So last week, the guys challenged me to say, hey, that we need to go on a trip. Right. Yeah. And so I went ahead and said, all right, let's do it. So I got us an eight day tour to yep. Turkey. Let's go. I was, we're going to pay for everything. So we're going to go. Turkey. We're going to do the footsteps of Paul or, or maybe the seven treasures or seven churches of Revelation. And all you guys have to do is pay for airplane. So I come back and say, all right, guys, let's go. We're ready to go. And then you guys tell me that. Oh, we have to get our time off. Now, wait, have... wait, 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 what? wait. What? It was, you know, I'm not going to throw my wife under the no, bus. No, 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 we're no, not doing that. We're not doing that. But <laughs> both of our wives have, you know, people to report to, I, and they can't I just know. take off unlimited I'm time. I'm Trust playing. me, Crystal all good. and Christina I'm would playing. jump on a plane quicker than we could get there if if, if they just were just a little bit to. more time than three weeks, right? I mean, yeah. oh, I know. No, I mean, what have, three weeks notice wasn't enough. Barry? We can go till we can go from May and then we can come back up in October, so we can do that. It's it's good though. If, no, we if, are all on board. We we definitely want to make. And that if trip. the girls can't go this year, we can just go. I mean, I we'll, just, we'll, we'll just we'll <laughs> just. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get my man works card in my week. house, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about your house, but in my house, yeah, we could just go. Christine, could he go by himself? Yeah. Tell, yeah, I've done it lots of times by myself. So, well, I'm I really looking forward to it. Well, I can we see this about it. Bob. He cannot go to certain <laughs> restaurants by himself. <laughs> it's true, and I know he can't go to another nation by himself, especially somewhere in the Mediterranean. Ain't no way. My lovely bride would let me go wherever. She'd be jealous, but she would let me go. Yeah, for the cause what, of Christ. What, yeah, you right? brought up restaurants. So I there was a so there's a little secret. Anybody ever comes to Florida? So if you ever come to Florida, and you want to have the best churls ever How, what mean, are those churls ever aren't you supposed to rule your r's churls ever okay okay right. you go to the amc theater where they do the dine-in okay and you order the three or the five pack they're i think they're expensive but i'm telling you they are the best tasting churls they have chocolate in them they have this little topping is they this put the one on. at university studio universal studios no it's at amc at disney springs disney springs one okay they got, is, i didn't know they had the dining there i'm not joking they do. They, it is so good that once you take a bite out of it you're like oh my gosh it is I don't even know how to word to All describe right, it. All right, tell the truth. It's really, really how good. How many did you eat? <laughs> tell the truth. Well, Come we got on, a five man. pack, and we wife and I shared two and a half each. So that's kind of well. I actually had two and three quarters. So, well, guys, that's, that's I know there's um there's something called March Madness going on. Is that? Yeah, I and mean, we missed it last year. So can you believe it? It's been a year since the world I know. shut down. I, know. I watched a so, little bit the other, on this it's weekend. It's amazing. So. I saw USC made it to the Sweet 16. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah, Pete. Best school ever. Florida State also in the Sweet 16. <laughs> what but, what but is that school that you just said? Florida State. But oh, they have a basketball team? Okay. They, they have a very good basketball team. Do they have a And I was just team? wondering, how, how did Liberty fare? I, I, wasn't, I didn't pay that much attention. Did, are they in the Sweet 16 as well? They're, they're not. They lost a game ahead. Yes. Uh, but they did good in football. Man, yeah, that, that's a they great did. football season. That's right. I think we were ranked higher than Florida State. I think you would beat Florida State in yeah. football right now. Our, our guests right went now. to Liberty, too. We'll, speaking we'll of, our, speaking of our guests, before you get to that, yeah. why don't you uh, give our show sponsor, Pete, and then introduce our guests, because well, I think it'll flow well. Yeah, I mean, it just all goes hand in hand. So our guest today is Pastor Rodney Gage, and um, 
just to kind of tell you a little bit about him, he's just really blessed my life in general. It's when I first met him, he he comes across as this um, master like communicator of the gospel. I mean, he's able to just bring it, and uh, he does it in such a effortless way. And anybody that sits and or listens to him. Um, here's the simplicity of the gospel being preached, but more importantly, it hears it in such a way that it's engaging and it, and it's in, and it really just brings people in and he's just, he's a, a just a blessed, uh, communicator of, of the gospel and he's just blessed my life tremendously. But part of that is he's involved with a couple of different pros. So his, his church is Rethink Life. You can find that he's in Orlando, Florida. Uh, my wife and I actually attend his church and it's RethinkLife.com is how you can find it. So if you're in Orlando, Florida and you're looking for a church, come on down to Rethink Life and you can find the directions on .com. And he also has a book that was out last year called, I believe it was last year, called Family Shift. And um, it's uh, his heart and his passion. He, I think he said it best that if you split him open in, in the thing, it's gonna it's gonna come out family. He he just cares for the family, and so he him and his wife wrote a book, and you can find that book on familyshift.com. Uh, you could probably find it in Amazon and anywhere else as well. But with that said, I would love to introduce Pastor Rodney Gage. As you guys can probably see him if you're watching live on, or if you're watching on the video, you can see him. If you guys are on podcast now, you'll hear him. But uh, Pastor Rodney, welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you, fellas. Hey, it's an welcome. honor to be here with the Riot Podcast. And um, man, I'm excited, honored, and uh, best introduction ever right there. You need to introduce me every week. <laughs> Hopefully, half of, at least half of what you said was true. But man, it what is an honor. true. It is true. We are just we've just ever since I've met you, we've just been blessed every week. Just uh, getting to know you more over the years, and uh, it's just been a blessed time. So, gentlemen, what are what's something you want to ask Rodney? What's something that you want him to uh, talk about himself? Yeah, go for it, Bear. <laughs> hey guys, uh, you need to hear about Rodney's family because they are a bunch of. Uh, just incredible people. Tell us about your family, Pastor. Oh man, uh, we don't have enough time. We just have <laughs> um, we have so much to talk about when it comes to our kiddos, and we're just we're Michelle and I, my wife Michelle, and I have been married for almost thirty years. June first, we'll be celebrating our thirtieth wedding anniversary. We wow. have three kiddos. We have a daughter that's 25 years of age. We have another daughter that's 23 years of age, just turned 23 this, this past week. And we have a son who is 20 years of age. So a 20 year old, a 23 year old, a 25 year old, two girls and a boy. And to be specific, our oldest has got brown hair. Our middle child, our daughter, Ashlyn, she has blonde hair. And our son, Luke, has red hair. So go figure. Chocolate, vanilla, love strawberry. It. God loves variety. Wow, what a balance. Is that a Neapolitan family? <laughs> it is. That's awesome. Bad? What a balance. Yeah, his son, Luke, is uh, an up-and-coming um, music kind of star. I mean, I don't know if you guys have heard about I him. Have. Luke Gage and... Uh, you guys can find him on Spotify and different things, but man, he is just a talent. Downloaded and on just, iTunes as he's well. Up and coming, definitely. Now he has a daughter too that's a worship leader, yes, right? Yes, she is. You want to talk about her? Well, our oldest daughter Rebecca and her son Daniel. Let's go. Her son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Her husband Daniel uh, are in Birmingham, Alabama. They are worship leaders at a little small, tiny, little up and coming church <laughs> called Church of the Highlands. Um, kind of up and coming. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. They have, <laughs> this church is know, ginormous like people. <laughs> 20 something, whatever campuses. And right. oh, I don't huge. know, gazillions of people every week. But anyway, but they are uh, connected there with their ministry and also with the school uh, that's connected with their church called Highlands College. So my uh, daughter, Becca, she oversees all of the Highlands College uh, chapels for the Highlands College students. And then her and her, her, and her husband, Daniel, uh, lead worship there. Um, as worship leaders for Church of the Highlands. And then our uh, daughter, Ashlyn, and her husband, they live in Lynchburg, Virginia. Another small little, you know, up and coming school called Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, <laughs> but my uh, son in law, Dylan, he uh, actually is uh, on staff with Liberty. And um, so they are 
in in the transition right now of uh, getting ready to go on to the next season. Our daughter, she graduated from Liberty and is pursuing her nursing, her medical uh, career and her path. And so she's excited. And then our son, Luke, who you guys just mentioned a few moments ago, he just recently moved to Nashville, pursuing his Man, full-time music career. career. And uh, we're just excited, proud for each of their unique callings and giftings. And, you know, they're just trying to be salt and light and trying to make a difference in their sphere of influence. So it's cool to watch that. Hey guys, there's awesome. proof in the pudding. I'm telling you, these kids are superstars. They are rocking the world with the gospel. And uh, it's really neat to, to watch from afar the fruit of Pastor Rodney and Michelle and the impact that that's having on this world. So w when someone talks about family shift, this man knows what he's talking about. Amen. You know, I was just thinking, um, you should probably tell us a little bit more about family shift, but I was just thinking, so Liberty gets a lot of play on this show. You they know? do. Yeah, it, it seems to be coming out a lot, you know? And and so again, another plug for Liberty University. Anybody yeah. that wants to go to a Christian university, there you go. And then another plug that was uh, Church of the Highlands. If anybody's in Alabama, I'm telling you, this church is the real deal. I've been there, uh, I've attended there before, and uh, just so blessed. Pastor Chris Hodge is there, and um, so if anybody's in that area and you're looking for a well-balanced church, there you go. And uh, to go, they have so many campuses all throughout with that. But with that said, did you have anything? I do. Yeah, go for so, it. So, uh, Pastor Rodney, it's been a it's been a tough year for a lot of folks. Um, and you guys included, you know, we know we actually talked a little bit about uh, your father-in-law um, right after uh, right after he passed. And uh, my question is, a year into this pandemic, what have you what have you learned that could maybe encourage other pastors going forward? That's good. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Bob. I think you know, really that last 12 months or year as far as the global pandemic i think it's affected people in so many different ways i think everybody's kind of had their own unique uh, story you know from the standpoint of how it's personally affected them some might be economic economic you know challenges or setbacks some could be physical health you know setbacks and challenges um, some, I think, just mental, emotional, even the relational challenges that so many people have struggled with. And then the, over, the overarching challenge, you know, of course, is the spiritual. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people are asking, you know, why? You know, why, yeah. why, you know, if God's loving God, why in the world would God allow something like this to yeah. happen? Why so much yeah. heartache and brokenness? And yeah. why so much pain? Why so much suffering? And what I've learned in, I think, honestly, just what God has been teaching me that I would encourage any pastor or any individual who is, you know, called to ministry or just any individual who, you know, is a person of faith, who, who knows the Lord in a personal way, is that there's strength in the struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we all go through something, mm -hmm. you know, but God never wastes a hurt. Mm -hmm. And when you read James 1, one of my favorite few verses of scriptures in James chapter one, but it says, you know, count it all joy when you go through various trials. And that sounds like a complete contradiction, oxymoron. Like they don't even make on a practical level, humanly speaking, it doesn't even make sense. How in the world do you count it joy when you go through pain and suffering? But the end result is so that we can come out perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Because God, there's a process that sometimes God just allows us to go through, to yeah. teach us, to refine us, really to put us in a position to become more dependent upon him yeah. and to ultimately so that we can learn what it is. I always ask or always encourage people to say, rather than asking the why question, take a step back and ask the what question. Mm -hmm. You know, God, what is it that you want me to learn God, what, what changes do I need to make? Mm -hmm. You know, what difference can I make through this season of suffering and difficulty? How can I take the focus off of perhaps my struggles mm -hmm. and what can I do to help, you know, carry the load or lighten the load of someone else mm -hmm. that maybe is going through Cause there's always somebody around us that's going through something. And I right. have found and learned in my own personal you know, journey is that anytime you treat somebody as though they're going through a difficult time, 99.99% of the time you're going to be spot on yeah. because everybody's going through something. So good. Yeah, the ultimate so goal is the Bible says to be still and know that I'm God. And I think that in our circumstance or in the chaos, God is saying, get away from that. 
be still in my presence. Allow me to be God of your life and, and just draw ever closer to him. And in that moment, in that time, that is when we hear God. That is when the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of God of what's next takes place. If that is peace, if that is comfort, if that is wisdom, if that is vision, if that is whatever that is, it's in the stillness, in the presence of God that taps that. So that's, that was really, really, really good. I think we can move on. What do you think? I any, more, any other questions? Nope. Because we could probably nope. talk to him about those things all day long. Yeah, that's a podcast all he, on itself. He, I'm telling you, if we open him up, he, the wealth of knowledge <laughs> that will come from him, we can be here for 15 episodes. That's so awesome. So we should probably that's just like awesome. this move on. Barry, you want to open us in prayer for today, and we'll talk about our subject about just um, talking about tips on how to share our faith. I'd love to. Go for Let's it. pray, everybody. Right. Father God, we thank you that you are here. Even if someone is listening to this podcast days and weeks and years later, that you're everywhere and where your word is shared, um, you're there. And so this is truth that we're sharing from your word, not human knowledge, not education, but the word of God that's active. It's alive. It changes us. And so, God, we pray that you would speak through us today and that you would be with each one of us and that you would just penetrate our mind, our heart with your word. Guide us and direct us, Lord. But, Lord, I pray for that person that really needs to be challenged with what we're sharing today. God, I pray that you would just draw them to this podcast for your glory and your honor. And let them know through this pie crass, they can make a difference. They can be used by you, Lord, to see a life change for all of eternity. God bless this time. Be honored by it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Barry. That's amazing. It just you know, as we're we're going into this uh, this season of Palm Sunday coming right up, yep. you know, assuming you're listening to us when we release this, yep. and then the Easter season, I don't think there's a better time of year to invite people uh, to to come to church with you. Yeah. You know, I think people are just more receptive this time of year, and maybe even more so this year, as of you know, last Easter we couldn't even you know go fellowship in person. Yeah, you know, ev everything was online and. You, I mean, I'm thinking back a year ago, and people were just learning what 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 a Zoom was. Yeah. You know, that was that was a new word for a lot right. of people. And now uh, people are sick of Zoom. <laughs> yeah, they're very sick of Zoom. <laughs> but man, I'm t to me, this is just an amazing opportunity to reach out to that to that neighbor that you see raking up their leaves or your coworker who you know just gets on your nerves but you know you need to pray for them yeah. um or your you know your relative or your, your family member that you know just they're hesitant of things of god mm. and just for something you know because it's easter there's that opportunity um to just get people into church where they wouldn't normally yeah. go yeah. so which i think kind of ties in yeah. to our subject today yeah. so we're going to talk about um you know how to share our faith and we and we're going to start off with really four reasons of why we should do that so and the first reason is basically because God tells us to, right? So I'm going to read Matthew 28, 18 through 20 to you. It says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So reason number one is God tells us to. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's amazing. I think that it's uh, like when we give our life to the Lord and we surrender it to him, it's it's one of those uh, commandments that God gives us. I mean, it's uh, he basically wants us to be able to share with people. Um, it, the Bible says by the word of our testimony, he wants us to be able to share with people our testimony of what God has done for us. 
and 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 just share with them um, those truths. And so I was just thinking, I mean, it's it's a commandment of God. It's not something that we want to take lightly. I think a lot of times there's as we give our life to the Lord, I don't believe sometimes followers under followers of Christ understand the importance of doing it. Um, it's not something like, you know, it's not a request. I mean, he's not just basically saying, hey, you know, you gave your life to the Lord. Would you be open to possibly right. sharing your faith? No, he's not saying that. Well, he's, I, he's basically wanting us and telling us that's what he's asking. And us I think do. a lot of people, oh, sorry, Barry. I, I think a lot of people just assume, and maybe it's just our culture in America, that it's the job of you guys, right? I'm sitting in a room with three pastors. It's the, it's the job of the pastor to share the gospel. And that's clearly not what Jesus was saying. Um, no. no. There it's was, all of our job. Go ahead. Yeah, there was more than just disciples there when he was saying this. But this is the last words of Jesus before he sends, and he's saying, uh, go make disciples. But you're talking about evangelism, right? I mean, yeah. we're talking about sharing our faith. That's evangelism, right? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. It's a big part of discipleship. You can't have discipleship unless evangelism yeah, takes place. That's true. It's good. And, you know, a lot of people divide that, right? They say there's evangelism and then there's discipleship. There is no division. You cannot have one without the other. You can't grow something that's not alive. Yeah. What do you think about that, Pastor Rodney? The, the, evangelist, the evangelist himself, <laughs> Pastor Rodney. As my dad used to say, we need more reachers rather than preachers. Yeah, amen. That's good. And, you know, I think God's called us all to be reachers. He's called us. He, we're all called by God. If we have a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ, then Jesus said, if you love me, then obey my commandments. Yeah. So a part you know, of the obedience factor is doing what God has called us to do, what God has asked us to do, not because we have to, but because we want to. I believe sharing your faith, there's ought to come out of the overflow of the re yeah. love relationship we have with the Father. Amen. You know, it's like Peter and John said, we can't help but speak of those things which we've seen and heard. So, you know, it's just something that, you know, we shouldn't see it as a, do or don't or or some kind of a uh, legalistic command but it's a relationship that we have with our father and we can't help but want to share with people something that has is good news that's changed our lives that's awesome bro thank you for sharing that tell us about your dad and uh you you said that your dad used to say tell us about that well my i was very very blessed and fortunate to have a rich heritage in the fact that uh, my dad uh, who unfortunately had a very difficult upbringing, was saved on the streets of Houston, Texas. Um, you know, unfortunately, he was a drug addict, uh, a hoodlum in and out of jail, uh, was saved, radically saved as a result of his father uh, getting him out of jail, paid his bond to get him out of jail under the condition he'd go hear this uh, street preacher preach. And my father, at the age of 19, gave his life to Christ and was later, uh, the very next night, uh, preached his first sermon on top of a pool table in the pool hall in Houston, Texas. And uh, from that point moving forward, God used him to reach over a million people for Christ. And he has four sons. All four of us are involved in the ministry. I'm the youngest of the four. And so we're just continuing to carry out that legacy of faith, continuing to share, you know, the mantle of the gospel. You know, not because so much of what our father did, but because of how God used our father to really help pave the way, you know, for us, all four of us sons, you know, to come to faith in our own lives. And so as a result, you know, it's just um, a, a great joy for us to continue that legacy of faith. And I believe that's part of God's plan as well, you know, is sharing the faith with, from generation to generation. I bet you got some incredible stories as a boy watching your dad share the gospel to people. Any of those stories, stories come up right now? Well, I saw him in every situation, um, literally from, you know, going into prisons and leading people to Christ on death row. Uh, seen him do that. I've seen him literally, you know, to in a, in a restaurant with a waitress leading you know, a young lady or a young man to Christ, you know, at a, at a restaurant. And I've also seen him, you know, in front of a packed stadium before, you know, 100,000 people and seeing thousands come to Christ. Wow. wow. So, I mean, I've seen him in just about every kind of setting. And as a result, you know, it just, it, it broadened my vision of what God could do through one person who just yielded himself to being available. 
I, I think it is. It That's comes nice. down to like when we, when we surrender to the Lord and we press into Him, and and we we have an intimate relationship with Jesus. It just becomes a natural outflowing, and I think a lot of people that have trouble doing the command of God and going and telling people it's because our relationship isn't in an intimate state and and that is the main one of the main hindrance of that but what would be the second point yeah about? so the second one is to make God famous and, and the verse I want to share with you on this one is um, excuse me <coughs> is 2nd Corinthians 4 5 and 6 it says for what we preach is not ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. So it's all about, you know, in our, in our prayer, in the prep show, in the show prep, we talk about and just we want God to get all the glory in this. And I think it's just really important that it's easy to be you know, try to make yourself the focus, but that's not what we need to do. There's so, nobody more no. famous on this earth than Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Every single person on the planet, for the well, I shouldn't say every person because there's people out in the middle of nowhere, but for the most part, he is the most famous person. I mean, China knows about Jesus, and China shuts down everybody that talks about him. I mean, Russia knows about them, and they're trying to control with their church. You know, they're even giving the the, the non-denominational churches or whatever, the non-Orthodox churches in Russia, they're quenching them. They're saying, hey, no, you're going to have to preach what we want you to preach. Every, Jesus is famous. And so we all we're doing is simply talking about the famous one. Even the atheists acknowledge that when they date their checks, Jeez, right? He, he, it's, <laughs> it's like, you talk about Buddha, okay. You talk about Muhammad, no big deal. You start talking about Jesus, people are going to have a problem. That's right. Because Jesus is truth. Jesus sets you free. The Jesus Italians changes coming things. At you, yeah, where did that come from? <laughs> I that's, love it. that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's awesome, man. All right. That's really good. Yeah. Right yeah. So time. number gonna, three. Catch oh, this is awesome. Right. Number three is to give hope. Um, and this is a really famous verse that most of you probably heard. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have, I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for evil, but to give you a future and, and hope. Pastor Rodney, you talk to that. <laughs> yeah, and I think when it comes to sharing our faith, you know, First Peter also teaches us that we are to be ready at all times, mm. you know, to give an answer for the, to the, about the hope that lives within us. So, you know, that's the hope that we have. We have the hope of knowing that our sin can be forgiven and forgotten. The hope of knowing that we can have second chances in life. The hope of knowing that the people that we love and care about the most can experience life change and new beginnings. The hope of the eternal security, knowing that we're going to have an eternal place that we can live forever and ever to be with the Father in a place called heaven. So... Man, you got to have hope to cope. And that's the reason why Jesus came, so we can have that hope. Yeah, I mean, just think about it. How many people like that are listening right now, if you really think about it, how many people have anxiety that you know in your life? How many people are hopeless in their life? How many so people many. do you know that might be depressed? How many people do you know might be bitter or angry in life? How many people do you know? This, just think about it. And then how now you come to that person and say, I there's hope here. Let me share with you hope, and his name is Jesus. Let me share with you truth. Let me share with you something that can help set you free from whatever you're feeling, whatever bondage, whatever that's going through. So th the hope is a big deal. I mean, it's everything. And so that is a big reason why we share our faith. Well, I think we have this amazing opportunity in this climate, too, because of what you just said, Pete. So many people are just struggling and depressed. I mean, we have this opportunity. I mean... To be the light, Jesus said to be the light. Yeah. We sh we should be shining right now with uh, just with no fear, walking around and and still being full of joy. People should be coming to us and saying, "I want what you have." Yeah, when Jesus is inside of you, you get pumped up, you get excited. You, I could talk about sports and get excited, but when I start talking about Jesus, come on, I, there's a whole nother light. I mean, because I really know the truth, but it's changed me so much. How could I not talk about him? How could I not want to help somebody that's going through something that's hurting? And so it just, it's just, he transforms you in such a way that you can't not stop. And that's the truth. As a follower of Christ, someone that's in love with Jesus, you can't stop 
talking about him because he changes lives. He is the one that can change addictions. He's the one that changes characters. He's the one that changes every aspect of someone's life. It's Jesus. And so that's hope. So good. We got Pete wound up now. Yeah, I sorry. love it. I love it. So but go ahead, is, please. What is our number one fear? Our number one fear is death. And what, what lines beyond the veil of death, right? And that's what Jesus has defeated. And and if that's the biggest fear of everybody and Jesus has defeated, it, we, we do have hope, right? That's right. He overcame death. He overcame uh, the grave. He overcame sin and and no matter what circumstance you find yourself no matter what this world says about you there is hope in jesus christ no matter where you're at no matter what you're going through no matter if you are that christian in china or russia being persecuted you have hope what can they what can man do to me right man can do nothing to you when jesus says you are my child and 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 a part of that hope is that we become somebody because the someone lives inside of us, right? When Jesus comes in us, we become valuable. We become uh, a child of God. You don't get any higher than that. As he's higher than anything else, when we become his child, he adds that value to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no hopeless situation when Jesus uh, is, is there and available. So again, the encouragement is as a follower of Jesus, why we do that, God commands us, God's the famous one. Why wouldn't we do it? But God changes us. God gives hope. God transforms lives. And it's real. This is not, we're not, this isn't play play. This is something we're just joking around about. This is something that we are serious about. And so there's a change. And then also because we're his spokesman and God wants us to do that. But how could we do that, Bob? So let's just move on to that. Yeah, let's do it. So you guys got them fired up. Let's, let's, there's a couple of ways that we can help share our, our faith. The first place I think it just in this society and in our culture today is we can use social media. Yeah. And there's a lot of different ways to use social media. I mean, it could be as simple as sharing, you know, your a post from your church, from your from your house of worship, yeah. you know, and inviting people. Again, this time of year we got Easter coming around the corner. Everybody's got their, you know, their Easter um, schedules up and they're you know doing extra services and all this stuff man you can help promote that on on Facebook on Instagram and all that stuff what do you guys think about social media and how can we use that yeah well I th- I mean I think it's one of the best gifts got you know God's given yeah. to us yeah. you know I mean from the stamp you know it's a double-edged sword obviously if you want to go find bad stuff on sure. the yeah. social media it's certainly out there but the flip side of it is is that there has never been a more strategic or easier time to share the hope that we just talked about than through this simple click or the you know push of a button and you know we all we all even tell we even tell our people you know sharing is caring you know if you care enough about your friends and you know the the people that you connect with well share the hope with them and so yeah whether it's a maybe a message you heard or a quote or a bible verse or maybe just verbally sharing your own personal story you know or maybe something that god is teaching you or maybe something you've gone through i mean just just using that platform is an incredible opportunity and i also think the beauty about social media when you think about it is that you know one of the and, and I know you're going to be talking and unpacking more about, you know, prophecy and the end times and yeah. stuff like that in future episodes. But, you know, that's one of these signs that I believe that is a great affirmation that, you know, the, the return of the yeah. Lord is drawing near yeah. now more than ever. Yeah. And one of the ways we know that is that every person will have at least heard yeah. the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so what better way, what greater tool than through social media yeah. for people to hear the gospel? Yeah, I mean, there's also the repercussions sometimes you're going to get. So like with this podcast alone, we do a lot of marketing to the world here and we get a lot of hate, you know, and so we've had people come out of bashed us and, and I mean, it's constant. And sometimes we get lots, hundreds, if not thousands of responses. And it's it gets a little scary because people are pretty aggressive. Um, and so I can understand that that from people's fear, of not wanting to do that. Um, but at the same time, again let's go back to why we do it it's it it is it's that important because when when you have actually have that relationship with jesus and he sets you free 
that it there are so many people there might be 10 people that hate your guts but there's gonna be so many people that are crying out there's gonna be so many people that are your friends or people that you are in your sphere of influence that are in need of that and and this is an opportunity that you could be able to share things a hope encouragement or something in such a way and at the same time, we talked about that, Sharon, you're, you're, you know, this is coming to Easter. What is the easiest way to share, to have people come to, you know, how many people are your friends that are living in your neighborhood that you can invite them to f church this week? You know, if your local church has some sort of social media, just share that with your friends, share that with the local people so that they can come. I mean, it's, it's, it, the, your church is a major way to get people to, uh, and we need to pray for those pastors that they give an evangelistic message because there's some pastors that don't give an altar call. So we need to pray for those pastors but it's this what an opportunity that, that we could just share that way barry you had a thought yeah speaking of social media i saw a uh, youtube video the other day that just blew me away and and it's pen gillette and it's about this guy that gave him a bible oh, yeah and and here's a an atheist guy talking about someone witnessing to him yeah and he says he keeps saying this over and over this was a really good guy this was a really good guy. People who who hear the gospel when we share it and we share it as good news, uh, it doesn't offend them. They have a choice whether or not to believe it or not. But Pendulet, go look at that video, and it's it's one of the titles is is the gift of a Bible, and he says if you really believe that someone who does not receive Jesus is going to hell, how much do you have to hate them? Yeah. To not share with it that's right he says if if i know that a, for certain a truck's going to hit you there's a point that i tackle you and move you out of the way yeah sharing our faith is is the greatest act of love that we can possibly do mm -hmm. and and the other thing one of the things we did not mention and i think it's so super important is one of the motivators of sharing our faith is having a vision of people in hell yeah mm -hmm. I mean, look at Luke chapter 16, where the rich man and Lazarus dies. And, and we see there that the man in hell is, is saying that he's in agony, yeah. that he's in torment. Yeah. And he begs Lazarus and yeah. Father Abraham, go tell my brothers. Yeah. I have five brothers. Go tell them. Even the people in hell are crying out for us to tell their family members mm -hmm. about Jesus. Amen. I mean, if you understand what hell is, I, what more motivations do you need? Yeah. I mean, people are going to suffer for all of eternity. Yeah. Oh, man, that just don't, breaks my heart. Yeah, don't let fear be the the reason why you don't do it. I mean, there's just the the upside, the 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 that side of things is so much more important. You know, and if you do have fear or whatever, pray through that and just have find that courage in Jesus. You know, just press in again to him. He will give you the strength. He'll give you that uh, that that willpower to actually do that um, because it's not going to be you. It's going to be God that's working in you. You know, speaking of that, Barry, real quick, I had that I had a, uh, a dream and this is what made me start sharing my faith all the time. Many, many years ago, I was playing golf with my friend. He was actually my accountant. And and as I was playing golf with, um, golf with him, I never once shared the faith with him. I never once shared the truth with him. He wasn't a believer. And God woke me up in the middle of the night and he, and he showed me him sitting at the heaven at Jesus's feet and says, why didn't you tell me, Pete? Why didn't you tell me? Mm -hmm. And, and it was just gut wrenching. And, um, and, and that, it, that made a mark on my, my life. And ever since then, if there's somebody, anybody that knows me, if you're close to me, if you are in my vicinity, you're going to know about Jesus. And it's just, it's just a proclamation that I made with God. God, I'm not going to ever do that again. And that's just a, something that we all got to do. We got to just, you know, let the Lord know that, you know what? I am a child of God and I believe this with all of my heart. And I'm going to share God's truth with people because there's a lot of people that are going to hell and there's a lot of people that are suffering. And so this is a duty and an obligation in Jesus name to go forth and do that. Yeah, and it gets it gets easier, guys. I mean, you see so many times when you're behind the computer, I see it all the time. You see people just being negative and bashing people. People say things that they would never say to somebody's face, right? They'll say it on the computer. Well, what if we turn that around and, you know, start just 
getting out of our comfort zone. You know, maybe it starts small. Maybe you, you, you've got your Bible app and you, you share a verse, you know, put a verse in a picture yeah. that looks prettier. You know, maybe it's a, you know, a picture that you've taken or whatever, but just kind of draw attention to it. And people, instead of laughing at cat videos, are reading a Bible verse, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you don't know who it's going to touch. You know, I think it's going to be amazing one day, Pete, is when, when we're standing in heaven and Jesus shows us the influence that we had in this world. Man, but the sad part is going to be, I think he's also going to show us our missed opportunities. Yeah. And, man, I don't want to be, that's going to be the, the only time I think you maybe feel sad. And, and uh, you guys, you know, you Bible scholars can correct yeah. me, but uh, that's just kind of where my head is. And I'm yeah. like, man, I don't want to be there and be disappointed at the missed opportunities. Yeah. So if, if social media is a way to do that and it's in your comfort zone, man, use it. Yeah. Well, just, I know to wrap up this point, you know, the thing that, um, would be a great, I think, step for some people to take is to reach out through social media and just ask for people to submit prayer requests Ooh, so to good. say, is there anything that I can pray for That's you really about? Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd be, you know, if, if you really want to see where people are and the struggles and the challenges mm -hmm. that people are facing, just, just say, how can I pray for you? So I'm good. committed to praying for you. And it's amazing how people will open their hearts and share specific things that they're going through. And as a result, we have the opportunity to really minister to their needs. So I would, um, one of the things that, as you were saying that, made me think of a person that I know that um, they would share their testimony. So they would say, hey, this has been our struggle that we're dealing with right now. And so I just wanted to take this to my, my friends here and just let you know that we were praying about this and that God was moving in our life. And then I just want to share, this is what God did. And they just shared their testimony. It was that simple. But I was just thinking, how powerful is that? Because they're sharing what their struggle was, but then they came back and shared what God did in their life life and so that's another way so yeah prayer that just if god you know that's simple that's you you're not you're not preaching to anybody you're not pointing a finger at anybody you're just basically sharing hey this is what god did to me and then they're going to ask the question well if he did that to you could he do that for me and so that's kind of the whole mindset behind that's kind that. of the twist of the your story my story his story right yeah and that's kind of where we're getting into um well let's move on to the second the second way we can share hey, before we yeah, go on yeah, let, let me just challenge us to make a comment if you take that challenge of doing a a prayer request on your social page, tell tell us that you're going to take a ch challenge, and we'll pray for you. Mm. Yeah, you know how many people speaking of that. I mean, you know how many people every week send us in prayer requests. So every week we're praying for people. So you guys are instant messaging us. You guys are saying, "Hey, pray for me right now," and um, and so that is that is happening every week. So that is amazing mm. idea. And um, Bob, um, next point. Yeah. <laughs> the second way is to do this in person, and I really want to just give you some tools. Yeah, that works. We just want to give you some tools to how you can share it in person. And when I was, uh, you know, kind of getting prepared for today, I started I started thinking about, you know, I heard preachers for years talk about the Roman road, right? And I knew that it was verses in Romans. That was about all I knew. I didn't know how to use the Roman road. I didn't know what those verses were. And uh, so I was wondering if uh, one of you guys wanted to maybe share, because if I'm the, if I was thinking that, I'm guessing there's listeners out there that are thinking the same thing. Like, yeah, what is this Roman roads thing that we can use to to lead people to Christ? Well, I would, I think Pastor Rodney has like a simpler way that we yeah. can talk to, which is that life, and we can get to that. But I think just to be able to, if we're going to share in person, I, our first our first mindset needs to be intentional. And so like if every day when a follower of Christ gets up, and so we're talking about social media, so we're intentional about that. But in person, it's a little bit different. We know that every day we're put on the full armor of God. And so we're going out for battle. So we know that we're going into the world to do one thing. So as Jesus sacrificed his whole life for one purpose, we are to sacrifice our life for the purpose of Jesus. And so when we leave and we leave our homes and go, we need to be intentional that we are about our father's business. We are ambassadors of Christ. So if we're going to our work, we're constantly looking for those opportunities to be able to share God's truth with people. 
And so uh, whatever that is. And then at the same time, we're willing to adjust our life to whatever God is. And so we get rid of that mindset of just, I have to do this and this is the way it's got to be. And then we lose sometimes all of these other opportunities. Yeah. And so we want to be intentional, but be willing to adjust our life to whatever that is that God says. And so it's <laughs> very so funny. <laughs> and so, um, so that's kind of the mindset. So when, when that opportunity comes, then we're ready. So what would be, what would an opportunity look like, Bob? What would something like that be? Well, I want to, first I give you an example of I, the first thing that came to mind out of a Bible story would be the, the Good Samaritan story where, you know, you've got the, you know, the religious leaders kind of just walk by the guy that's laying on the side of the road. So but what does that look like in today's, in today's world, right? You know, so many, we're so busy. We've got it. We've got deadlines and, we're, you know, we leave, you know, if it takes us eight minutes to get somewhere. We leave seven minutes before we have to be there. And then we try to make it up you know, rolling through a stop sign or something. Right. So we have we have no margin. So I think what it would look like in today's world is just putting some extra time, having margin in your schedule where being available, right? Being available. Yeah. So yeah. You, you you pass somebody on the side of the street and they're obviously struggling, changing their tire. Right. What if you took 10 minutes to help that person out? And, and, you know, they're going to thank you for stopping and helping them out. And it just opens up an opportunity to say, well, you know, it's not really me. If it was just me, I would have kept on driving. But uh, the Holy Spirit just said I needed to stop and help you. Or you see somebody, I, I, I've seen people in, the, we have a grocery store called Publix down here. And I've seen, um, especially moms with crying and yelling kids that are just like throwing tantrums because they couldn't get their fruity pebbles or whatever the case were. They yeah, I worked food in. The fruity pebbles. So, you know, just praying for that person or, you know, maybe taking a moment and just start talking to that kid and try to calm that kid down and, you know, and just say, you know, hey, you know, are you helping mommy out? Or And it's weird because, you know, like I'm trying to think of the words I would say, but in the moment, the Holy Spirit always seems to give the words. It's like I had no idea where that came from, but then, and, I, then again, again, I did. And again, it goes back to the intentional. And so let's kind of get into that. And yes, yeah. Rodney, was, we'll talk with you on it. But it's we we want to if you're going to talk to people you need and, and about Jesus, we need to ask questions. We need to actually engage with them about what's going on in their life. And and I mean, it's one thing to say we're going to pray for people. We do that all the time. That should be just we pray without ceasing. And that's just a part of who we are. But at the same time, it's there, there needs to be a bottom line. The bottom line is people need Jesus. The bottom line is people need to know about the hope that God gives. And so if we're with our coworkers or we're building friendships or we're actually out in the park or we're at Publix or whatever that is, we're being intentional about actually having a conversation with that person about the spiritual things that matter. Yeah. You know, we could talk about the physical and the material and all we want, but as a child of God, I mean, how many opportunities do we have that we just let go by because we're not intentional about actually having a conversation with the person? So true. And it can be so simple. I mean, you could just be talking about sports or, or something in that realm. It can be just very basic and you never know how God can open up a door. And I always tell my wife, I said, I'm always looking for that door open. I'm not going to kick it in. I'm not, if the Holy Spirit is not working. And the, and the Holy Spirit is not moving and the door is not open. I'm just going to continue on the course that we're doing as far as the questions. But there comes a time when I put myself in a vulnerable position to actually engage with people that all of a sudden that person says, That's right. well, I don't have hope in that. Or I've, I've just, I feel depressed in that or whatever that is. And then boom, there it is. It opens the door for me to be able to share with them God's truth. And I think, Pastor Rodney, I was just wondering if you, we could talk about kind of what you talked about this past Sunday on how you share your faith. And you used an acronym, LIFE, L-I-F-E. Would you like to talk to that and, and kind of share how people could walk through and share in their faith with other people? Yeah, and I think just to preface everything that all that's been said, honestly, most people who know the Lord, who have a relationship with Christ, I'm convinced they want to share their faith. Yeah. yeah. They just don't know how. Yeah. And so, you know, we have to come alongside and say, okay, well, here is a simple tool. Yeah. You know, here's something that you can use to give you a guide or a framework or just something to kind of help navigate and guide the conversation if that door of opportunity presents itself. Yeah. So what I've encouraged people to do, and I'm I'm I love 
acronyms, acrostics, you know, because it gives me a framework He's and it's easy it. to memorize. So I came up with something um, as I'm talking with somebody to help me in the flow of that conversation. So I always start with the L, which stands for love, because when you think about it, you know, what, what, why, why did God create us? He created us. He made us so that he could love us. So he could have a relationship with us for God. So loved the world mm. and God actually proved and demonstrated in Romans five, eight, that, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God loves us and he wants nothing more than to have a relationship with us. So as we're talking with people, we're sharing God's love with people it's important for them to understand that God loves them and God wants to have a relationship with them. And he wants us to experience the fullness of everything he has for us. But there's a problem. And the problem leads to the next letter, and that's the I in the word life, which stands for isolation. Because something happened, and it's called sin. And so when sin entered into the world, what happened? Well, it cut us off from that fellowship, that relationship with God. When God first created us, we lived in perfect harmony. We lived in, in the ultimate situation and relationship. There was peace. There was harmony. There was unity. There was oneness. There was in, intimacy in our relationship with God. But when sin entered into the world, when yeah. Adam decided, I'm going to do it my way rather than God's way, mm. then sin entered into the heart of every person. Mm. And so as a result, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we've all missed the mark. We mm. cannot, in, in on this side of heaven, earn our way, work our way, do enough good things to work our way back to God or make God love us more than he already loves us. So because of sin, what does it do? It separates and it isolates. That's what the I stands for is isolation. Mm -hmm. So God loves us, but because of sin, sin is what isolates us from God. Mm -hmm. But God loves us too much to keep us there. He didn't, mm -hmm. he never wanted us to be isolated forever apart from him. That's why he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die for us, mm -hmm. which is the F in the word life, mm -hmm. which stands for forgiveness. So God loves us. He gave his one and only son, Jesus, to die for us so that we could be forgiven, so that we could experience the forgiveness of sin, so that relationship that was cut off could be restored and renewed, and we could have a new life in Christ mm. and have the eternal hope, which is the E, yeah. which is eternal life. Yeah, amen. So because of that, it, it gives us a framework, kind of a step-by-step you know, uh, flow, if you will, when it comes to just taking somebody from where they are mm. to where God desires for them to be. Mm. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, I've come that you may experience life and experience it to the full. Yeah. And so when you think about just a simple way, that is something that people can kind of use as some handles, if you will, to give people hope and give them life that's found in Christ. So Jesus. I see it this way. So I've always, I've said like this one time. So it's their story, our story, God's story. And so uh, as we're having a conversation, we're knowing about them. We're learning their story and then we're bridging with them. We're, we're finding out what our common, common ground is. And as we find out our common ground, we're now telling our story that relates to their story. And as we're doing that, that's where we're looking for those open doors. And as we're talking about, we're talking about their story, our story. And when the, when the, when the door opens and now we talk about God's story, and what Pastor Rodney was just saying is that life, L-I-F-E, the love, isolation, forgiveness, and eternal life. And so we first start with God's love. When God loves you, and we're telling this person, God loved me so much that he set me free, and God loves you equally. I was a sinner, and God, and you're a sinner equally. And so then you start working through God's story, and then you would say, and, but if you ask God for forgive you of your sins, he will. He'll forgive you of all of that and set you free. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you can have eternal life. And so it's, uh, so it's, it's God's story, our story, I mean, their story, our story, and God's story, and then we can walk them through the life which will help them find to, to walk with people. It's pretty simple. It's basic. I mean, this is not rocket science. We're not saying, hey, memorize the whole book of John. We're not <laughs> saying that. We're not saying you need, to, you need to have a theology degree. This is really simple stuff. It's a great tool. All you're doing is just talking to people, and then you're telling them through L-I-F-E, love, 
God's love, this isolation, sin, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. You're sharing that. Then you're give, asking for forgiveness. You're asking them, would you like to have forgiveness of your sin? And they say, yes, let's pray right now. And then you just say, fumble through it. God, forgive us of our sins. Amen. Whatever it is, God knows your heart. Amen. And then with that, there's eternal life. So Barry, you want to just, if there's somebody on there today that, that, that doesn't know the Lord, you want to just, just walk them through that quickly? You know, there's a passage that came to my heart in Matthew 9, verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and the villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Listen to this, though. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest. Are you feeling harassed and helpless? Well, there is someone that wants to rescue you, Amen. and that's Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, the one thing that I take out of that passage is that he sees you. And that's what we need to do. We need to see people the way Amen. Jesus sees Thank them you, and have compassion just mainly means we care and the reason why we're going to give you an opportunity to, to pray to receive christ because it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to us and we love you we care about you would you pray with us dear god i know that you love me i know that you created me and you want a relationship with me but lord i realize i can't have that relationship because of the problem I'm a sinner that separates me and isolates me. And oh, do I need your forgiveness? I believe when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no man comes to the Father except through me, that Jesus, you're the only way to the Father. You're the only hope. You're the only life. You're the only way to get forgiveness of sin. And so I pray. Don't put my trust in myself and my performance. I put my trust in your performance you, and what you did on the cross. I believe that you were buried. I believe that you rose again the third day. And because you are alive and you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords, I invite you right now into my life to be my Lord, my King, my Savior right mm. now. Save me now. Mm. And Lord, help me to get connected to a good church. Yes, Lord. Help me to learn your word and help me to live every day for you and tell others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. And if, if you want to just reach out to us on our, pod, on our website at riotpodcast.co, C-O, there's a section at the mini bar that says, No God. Go ahead and click on that. Go down all the way to the bottom and say that, yes, I accepted Christ and fill those, fill that out. We'd love to get you a Bible. We'd love to connect you to a local church that's there uh, where you're at and, and just uh, answer any questions that you might have. And if you are listening and you and you do have hard, those hard questions, like if God is such a good God, why does he kill people or why does he allow all this destruction to happen? We have a lot of those questions on our website as well that you can go to it under common questions and we answer some of those hard questions. But at the same time, reach out to us. Reach out to us on social media. Go ahead and fill out the, the form and, and we would love to just reach you and talk to you and, and connect with you some way. Bob, how would we do that? Yeah, so we have social media, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. It's the Riot Podcast. And uh, man, we would just love to hear from you. We would love to know that you're listening. Type in the comments where you're listening from. That would be awesome. Um, Pastor Rodney, do you have any uh, any final words before we wrap up the show here? I do have one final thought, but I'll well, say if, it. Yeah, if, I'll give it. I'll give and it. just as a gift to the audience yeah. as well, uh, I'd love to be able to send those who may have prayed that prayer or would like to have more information about the LIFE acronym. 
Uh, there's a little 30 day uh, reading plan in the back of this little booklet. We'll send it to you guys so y'all can forward it on to your listeners who want a copy of that. It's free. It's just a PDF. They can download it and we'd be happy to give that as a gift. But listen, guys, so thankful for what God is doing, how he's using Riot Podcast. That's my prayer. Awesome. Is that we'll see a riot take place Amen. all over the world Amen. where we, uh, we see our world turn right right side up for Amen. jesus that's so. awesome now guys what what an amazing show i i just pray that the listeners out there just got a tool or something that they can take yeah. away to to just help um help in their journey a little bit more and just help not not be fearful i mean you know the bible tells us that <clears throat> the spirit um is not to make us timid right first timothy 1 7 yeah. or second timothy 1 7 says that uh, the spirit it gives us boldness and and we should go out there be bold and I, I can tell you for so long i was fearful to share my faith because i i had this fear of well what if they say no or what if they don't do it yeah. and i just want to tell you look the results are not your responsibility amen the results that. of the holy spirit's it's responsibility never about you. it's not about us nope. Our job is to just be obedient yep. and share with, with, like Pastor Rodney said, out of the overflow that uh, that is in us and to share that. So, guys, we love you. We, we, we're we praying for you. Please, if, if you want a copy of the, the book that Pastor Rodney mentioned, just comment. We'll, in, we'll put it up on, on the social media so people can see it. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, as always, if you're, you know you want a T-shirt, reach out to us. You can go to the website. And... Um, Anything else? What am I missing? That's it. We're, We're almost good. to Easter, right? So yeah. happy Palm Sunday this week. Yep. Um, man, use this opportunity to reach your friends and family. There's yep. there's just no other time of year like it. Um, just don't let the opportunity slip you by, slip by you. So we love you guys. Night. Have a great week. Peace out. This has been the Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of the Riot Podcast.